three, two. Okay. Hello. Um, welcome to Rhythm Heaven Fever, a game for the Wii that is very good. I like this game a lot. I like it enough to where I've learned how to play it uh, completely blindfolded, um, and get all 50 superb rankings. So I'm going to do that today. Basically, a superb ranking in this game is there's three, technically four rankings, but there's three we're going to worry about, um, which are uh, try again, okay, and superb. Superb gives you a medal, usually. I'm going to be playing on a file with all the medals just to save time on menuing because I only have so long today. And there are 50 medals you can get by getting a superb ranking on 50 games. So... That is very... That's about it. Yeah. Um, I have my sound going into my Wii U gamepad here, so I can hear my game perfectly fine. Um, however, this is going on now, because I'm about to start with the first game. So, making sure I can't see anything. Yes, I made this blindfold out of a sock and a hair tie. It got the job done. And I'm gonna get started with Pole in one. Assuming I'm on the right game. I am. Alright, cool. So the thing about Hole in one is that it's easy. Um, here's the thing about Rhythm Heaven. It's a very easy series to get into, kind of. Um, because the notes don't move. Unlike maybe any other rhythm game you've played, um, the notes in this game actually just kind of go to you. As you can see in this game, where we're getting golf balls thrown at us, and the main goal is to time the uh, A button to the rhythm that the golf ball gets thrown at us. There are... every rhythm game has a different kind of timing, so you have to learn how to play each one, but you don't have to move anything around, which makes it pretty easy to play blindfolded once you learn how to play it, because you just kind of have to react to an audio cue. Um, as you can imagine, it's probably easier to play with Vision than without, especially in some instances, and this one is pretty easy. I'm talking. I won't be able to talk during the game for a lot of these, because talking during the game is, um, distracting. So yeah, on top of every, like, game playing differently, every game has its own cues that you have to learn. And those cues can sometimes be easier than others. So the monkeys in this game are very loud. However, like, the next game we're gonna play is not so loud. It's actually kind of one of the harder ones to hear. So yeah, that's hole in one, not hard. Um, we'll see what rank I get here. If you're playing on a fresh file, when you get a superb like that, you get a spe you get a medal. Um, so that's why the category is called all medals. I am playing on a completely finished file so I can save time on menuing throughout the run, just so I don't like go over my time slot. Um and that even if I don't win a game, I'm just going to move on instead of going for the medal again. So yeah, this game is kind of hard because the sound that plays when a robot gets placed on the track is actually really quiet. So I have to be quiet here and make sure I hear that.
Okay, that's good. Um, so I didn't get one there, but I'm going to talk about a little bit of a, what a perfect ranking is. So the fourth ranking in this game I mentioned is called the perfect ranking, and you can't get it on a normal playthrough of the game. You can see by the P medal that I have that I have a perfect on, like, every perfect on this file already. Usually what happens um, is when you get superb on a game, later on you get a chance to go for a perfect on it, which is where you have three chances to beat the game perfectly um, to get, like, a special type of award. Here I have to press A every time I land. It's pretty simple. It is the first game, as you just saw, to have... I don't know if that one's actually, but... This is the first game to have tempo changes mid song Um, so that is pretty tricky. Because you have to change your timing kind of on a whim. I mean, it's there. You can hear it, and you can... Sometimes see it, but you know. So yeah, I almost got that, like, perfectly, but, like, getting a perfect rank in a Rhythm Heaven game doesn't just mean doing it perfectly, it means doing it perfectly with a perfect chance. So, it gets really hard to master, because you can't, like, grind one game for a perfect repeatedly, and it usually requires a lot of, like, being good at any game at any given time. This game kind of puts you on its schedule. Uh, these early games are still kind of easy, because they're trying to, like, ease you into it. But there are some hard ones. Like, Shrewbot's pretty hard. Uh, this one's easy, though. That's nice. I just called this one easy. And then I failed immediately. I'll take this intermission to talk about it a little bit about this series. Rhythm, uh, Rhythm Heaven Fever is actually the third of currently four games in the Rhythm Heaven series. Uh, the first one being released for the GBA and never reaching outside of Japan. Um, we actually didn't get a Rhythm Heaven game until we got the DS version, which is also just named Rhythm Heaven. Um, 
kind of named gold because that's what it's called in Japan. So people call it gold, even though in the U.S. it's just called Rhythm Heaven. Um, one big thing about the series is remixes, where that whole set of four games are all going to be combined into their own new song right here. About this ranking I'm about to get, because I don't think it's going to be a superb. Okay. Um, rankings in the Rhythm Heaven series are actually a lot more precise than you might think. Instead of it being, oh, you get a superb if you reach, like, you know, X amount of inputs in the song, um, as you might have noticed with some of these games, every game has a bit of, like, criteria, and you have to do good enough on each criteria in order to actually get the superb. So I could, the game could have two parts. I could get the one part perfect and not great on the other part. I wouldn't get it. my first technically perfect but yeah as you're going to see here there's going to be multiple lines of text i have to meet all of these not just multiple um to get a superb instead of just an okay um fever is considered one of the best games for newcomers in the series because it is the first game of the three including the two before it where the uh per the superb condition is an insanely tight the ds entry specifically is known for having very difficult superb ranks to obtain.
and there we go. That tambourine. That's the first, like, Mimic game. So there, that, there are going to be more of those later, games where I'm given a pattern I have to repeat. They're kind of stressful when you can't see, because you kind of... You don't have to use intuition, obviously. You can use rhythm to determine when to start hitting. But it's kind of a lot harder to tell where things are when there's no set pattern. It's just kind of a random one being given to you. Um, they're very easy to, like, learn, I'd say. But still kind of stressful. This one's just free. This one is very short, too. Very simple. Um, coming up next is Monkey Watch, which actually, for this intermission, I'm going to tell a funny story. Two times I have tried to do a challenge where I get all 50 perfect ranks blindfolded. I've never fully succeeded. However, between my two attempts at the challenge, I've gotten all 50 of them. The last attempt I did, I only missed one. It was not this game. However, this game was the 49th one I got. <laughs> so it was the last one I ended up getting in that attempt. One, nowhere near the first person to try playing through this game blindfolded. Um, I'm not even the first person to try submitting this game to an event. Well, I'm not sure if it's ever gotten into an event blindfolded until now, uh, Runner and fan of the series, Ted Wack, has actually submitted this category, Blindfolded All Superb, to GDQ on multiple occasions, which is pretty cool. This is actually one of the hardest superbs in the game due to how short that song is. 
Not a joke. The input to length ratio of that song is actually ridiculous. So I'm glad. I'm really glad I got that one. Like, that's the, like many songs in this game are actually very difficult due to how long they are. Oh, I accidentally went to a... I actually went back to the title screen. In interesting. Where am I? Okay. Uh... We're good. Oops! Uh, many games in this game are actually difficult to superb blindfolded, or just in general, due to how long they are. That's actually one of the few, if only, instances where a game being too short actually causes it to be one of the hardest superbs in the game. Working Doe is actually the only game in Rhythm Heaven Fever that is a mimic pattern game where you don't get punished for inputting out of line. You only get punished for missing the beads there. So I was able to flex my memory by just kind of copying the left dude as he was going. Because it's fun, I guess. I don't know. That's my whole motivation. Two fun facts. One, Built to Scale actually has an original interpretation in the first three Rhythm Heaven games. So the GBA, the DS, and the Wii ones. Uh, at this point in the series, it had original, like, kind of, uh, interpretations uh, at the whole point in the series until it didn't show up in Mega Mix. Several games that are like that, I'll get to them later. But also fun fact, the sound effect of the widgets bouncing is one of, if not the only uses of 
like left right stereo sound in this game all the music is mono one, two, and can be played on one speaker few quick facts. One, as you can probably guess, Air Rally is very popular in the series for its ridiculous sound effects. Um, it's great. That character's name is Forthington, who was making them. Two, as you notice, that game has a lot of visual distractions, so it's kind of harder to play. Like, it kind of tries to distract you by making the sights weirder. Doesn't mean it's easier to play blindfolded, but that does happen. Uh, third fact, if you miss the very last hit, the text box that says nice job actually changes to him getting very angry that you missed the last hit. Fortunately, I didn't miss the last hit. Go, go, go! And Jeff. Jeff, 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 go, go, go! And Jeff, 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 go, go, go! And Jeff, 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 go, go, go! And Jeff, Jeff, what two? Go, go, go! What two? And Jeff, Jeff, what two? Go, go, go! One, two, and one, two, one, two, and jab, 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 and one, two, and jab, jab, one, two, and jab, 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 and one, two, and jab, jab, go, go, go! And jab, 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 go, go, go! And jab, 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 go, go, go! Jeff, 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 and one, two. Fun fact, figure fighter is the first perfect I ever got in any Rhythm Heaven game. This isn't even the first Rhythm Heaven game I've played. The first one I played was the GBA game. Um, there is a fan translation of it known as uh, Rhythm Heaven Fever, or Rhythm Heaven Silver, which you can download um, and play on a GBA emulator or an EverDrive or something like that. Um... I'd very much recommend it if you want to get into the series. It's not an easy game, but it's a very easy way to start. Jeff, Jeff, go, go, go! One, two. One, two. One, 
Not Rhythm Heaven's first foray into lyrical soundtracks, even all the way back in the GBA game, there were songs with lyrics. I know that there is a game on the DS version that actually uses a J-pop song named Struck in the Rain. And that so and I don't know if this is the series' first time with actually creating lyrical music, but they have used it a lot in the past. Also, if you know Rhythm Heaven for anything, it's probably this minigame right here. I did it, guys. I posed for the fans. So yeah, that was ringside. Um... This is a game. Which game is this? Is this Packing Pests? I think it is. I'm very right. Double up. Double up. Double up. 
That is the first. That is. This song is the first one that I ever listened to from the Rhythm Heaven series, fun fact. Um, it's a pretty good one. Um, I'll delve more into why that's the first one I ever heard or not. The first full one I ever heard, I guess you could say. I'll get into it in a little bit. Coming up, we have Micro Row, which I have a funny story to tell after this game. So, fun fact, that's my least favorite song in the game for one reason, and that is that one, like, instrument kind of sound effect type thing you might have heard throughout the whole song that goes like, doo -doo 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 -doo. actually reminds me of an alarm that I used in, like, fifth, sixth grade. So every time I hear that song, I think an alarm is going off, and that's why it's my least favorite. actually surprisingly difficult. Um, as you saw, there was a giant story about getting that pinwheel back, and then the very last shadow monster in the path had the pinwheel. If you play the rest of the game perfect and then miss that pinwheel, you do not get the superb. You only get an EOK, because that's one of the criteria for getting the superb. The other fun fact is that uh, Samurai Slice is actually another game that's had a rendition in almost every single Rhythm Heaven game. It was actually absent from the second game, the DS game, and after being present in the first game, and then has renditions in this game and the 3DS game Rhythm Heaven Mega Mix, which is the most recent game in the series to date.
Fun fact, the opening text in that minigame is not the same every time. There are two things that can be. It can either be something along the... I don't remember the quotes exactly, but it's like there are mountains that a samurai must climb is one of them. And then I think the other one is there are rivers that a samurai must cross. Just a fun little Easter egg. Fun fact about this game, it's easy! That's the game I consider to be the easiest in all of Rhythm Heaven Fever. It's easy. Coming up is my favorite game in the series. Probably not the whole series. Debatably the series. Definitely my favorite song in this game. Or mini game, rather. I don't say song. There are some I enjoy listening to more, but playing? This one's great. This one is perfect. I really wish I could see this one, you know? It's pretty cute. I clicked the same one. There we go. This one. This one is cute and good and fun. I wish I could see it, and it's my favorite in the series. Um, probably. Uh, this one is fun and good and cute, and yeah, I wish I could see it, but I'm gonna play it. What am I doing? What am I doing? You may wonder what I am doing. I still got superb. Listen, doesn't matter. I'm. That was a thing. This is exhibition now. It's deceptively difficult.
See, everybody over the summer was talking about this thing called Blaseball, and I think this is what it was. I think this is what Blaseball is. So, for those still unsure, here you go. There you go, there it is. Go Sunbeams! Woo! I don't know anything about Blaze Paul. My team's not actually the Sunbeams. Don't 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 take that too seriously. It could be the Sunbeams. I just ha I just don't know. I don't know what this. I have a friend who likes the tigers, and they keep posting the gift that says like many stripes. I'm a big fan of that. I love I love the stripes. The stripes are. Oh, they're good. There are many of them, too. So, that is what I call my pet peeve game for two reasons. One, because the legs actually snap up on your bird when you let go of A, so your leg up and down isn't always as the same as other birds, and B, you switch the direction you're facing every time you step, so if you miss one step, you're suddenly entirely misaligned from the other birds, and it really bugs me. Oh, no, no.
Ready? Two flipper roll. One, two. One flipper roll. One. Okay, we're halfway through now. I am going to take a health and bathroom break real quick, so I will be back in about a minute or two. Um, you guys relax and enjoy. And of course, a health safety. Uh, okay, thanks. A health break won't be complete without a reminder to stay hydrated. Let's get back to some rhythm heaven. actually a personal like top one of mine i mentioned what my absolute favorite was this might be like second actually really pretty. Also, for the record, those bowling ball pins, you could hear the bowling sounds, like, when I shot them. I don't believe they're a reference to Orbulon from the WarioWare series. Like, I'm pretty sure there's not supposed to be any for you. I mean, that man just looks like a bowling ball. Like a bowling pin, rather. Uh, but the games are made by the same developer. So these developers did also work on Warrior with.
want triplets in your Rhythm Heaven minigames? There you go. Um, I guess speaking of me using a musical term, um, the next game is named after a musical term, Bossa Nova, because the two characters in it are named Bossa and Nova. There's a credits roll in this game that tells you all the character names. Some of them are basic. Like, for example, the monkey and Mandrill in Hole in One are named Monkey and Mandrill, and then the golfer is named Golfer. But then there are characters like Baxter and Forthington from Air Rally who have names. I don't get it. So I guess I was going to mention this when I started mentioning music terms that I know them. Um, I'm going to give a quick background in my history as a musician, which isn't really anything. Um, I took a few lessons for stuff like piano, guitar, drums when I was a lot younger. I have not retained any of that. The main thing I'm known for musically is that I was a French horn player in my school's band from fifth grade when elementary schoolers started band in my old school district all the way until my senior year of high school. I stopped playing French horn after that because I didn't really care for it anymore. Uh, but I did also do my first two years of high school as a mellophone player, so that's kind of where I am musically. Um, some people think I'm a good singer, but I've never really trained my voice for it, so it just kind of... I don't think I'm that good personally. Into you. Into you. Into you. Into you. Into you. Into you. notoriously disliked fun fact. I like it quite a bit, but a lot of people find it way too hard to understand. It's a pretty hard one to understand. Into you. 
I'm gonna take this time to look at things again just to get a nice little like tech check making sure that everything is still like running fine which uh it looks like we're doing good difficult. Um, it's a lot like Flipper Flop, which is one of my favorites, therefore one of my most played, therefore I'm somewhat good at it. However, that one's actually kind of difficult because the ready tap 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 parts are less than consistent in their rhythm. During Remix 7, you'll get a good amount of, or a good, like, account of how kind of silly Tap Troop can get with its offbeats. Together.
I'm not sure if the mod for it is still up, but I did my first playthrough of this game on a stream about four years ago. A little bit over four years ago when I first got it. Um, this is the last game I played on that stream because I actually managed to make it on my first time playing this game all the way to Shrimp Shuffle, which is the seventh set of game, the 32nd game, mini game that you play out of 50. I managed to make it all the way to Shrimp Shuffle before I got a single try again uh, ranking on a minigame, and that was the first try again ranking I ever got in Fever. One, two, So, all the characters in the books there, when I did OK, It's On, were actually references to other Rhythm Heaven games. I can't tell you who the characters you are, because I couldn't see them. However, not being able to see is actually not a problem. Around the time the Switch came out, or a little bit after, sometime after 2017, um, after the beginning of it, rather, uh, the devs of this game actually received a letter from a Japanese blind kid thanking them for making the series so that blind people had a video game series for them to play. And they, the developers promised in that, uh, in their response to that letter that they would make more games. So I'm waiting for this game to come out on Switch, basically. I've mentioned other reoccurring games in the series, such as Samurai Slice and Built to Scare, or Built to Scale, which have had uh, iterations in previous Rhythm Heaven games. Karate Man is the only minigame in the Rhythm Heaven series to have a completely unique iteration 
across all four current games in the series. Here's some crazy stuff. series of caps is 22A presses long. Also at this point, this is where if you were playing on a new file, you would actually get the credit sequence now. On top of the credit sequence being a roll call of every character in the game, there is also a unique song that plays called Night, uh, Dreams of Our Generation that plays to a song, uh, to a minigame called Nightwalk. Nightwalk is actually a, re uh, not a, uh, reiteration of a minigame that appears in the GBA version of Rhythm Heaven. Um, and features a character named Playan, who is the mascot of a media player on the GBA that was released in Japan. The Playan media player actually let you play custom music and video files on the GBA. That game has the same uh, superb condition as Samurai Slice 1, where even if you get the rest of the game perfect, you don't get the superb ranking if you miss that bunny right there. I, of course, have to save the bunny. Um, that was the first sequel game. There are 12 of them because there are three sets of sequel games, which feature four sequel games and a remix, which are just basically harder versions of the uh, of previous mini games set to new songs and... Some of them change up the game a little bit, but for the most part, it's the same mechanics.
as you can imagine by all of the awkward pauses in that one, that is one of the games that I actually practice the most every time I want to play this game. Uh, blindfolded, is I have to put a bunch of time into working there, too, because it is ridiculous. During the first session of Blindfolded Perfect attempts I ever did, that was one of the seven games I did not get perfect, along with Working Dough 1. So, Working Dough 2, specifically, is insanely difficult. Is also stupidly hard, but not for like any good reason, just because it's stupid. Uh, fun fact: in the submission video I gave for this, uh, for this uh thing, for like this event, I made a video. I recorded a video that was up to date of me doing this challenge. Um, I only ever missed one medal, so I only had to play one game twice, and it was built to scale two. Because I missed one input and the game gave me a try again.
going to take a quick look at stuff stream-wise, make sure everything is good. Um, remixes 8 and 9. Okay, cool, I got that. Remixes 8 and 9 um, are actually not using, like, just the four normal games. Because the sequel games mean that you have uh, everything, like you've played everything already, the sequel games just actually, or the sequel, what's it called? Like, remixes just kind of have anything they want in them. Crazy into you. Crazy into you. Into you. Into you. Focho. Focho. Into you. Into you. Focho. Focho. Into you. Into you. Bo-cho-bo-cho-bo-cho-bo-cho-bo-cho-bo-cho-bo-cho-bo-cho-bo-cho-bo-cho-bo-cho-bo-cho-bo-cho-bo-cho-bo-cho-bo-cho-bo-
Okay. I'm a little bit worried about a few things right now, so sorry about, like, in the free quick X, I just want to make sure everything is running fine. Stressful uh, for so many reasons, but I still got it. This next game's full gimmick is that it turns the lights out. The lights are already out. That was still really hard, even despite the fact that the whole gimmick is negated by me wearing a blindfold. I still got it. So here we go, remix 9. Very fast. Crazy, 
Okay. Just one more check to make sure everything is fine. 7.42 p.m. So I have 18 minutes before the end of my time slot, and I'm only at five more games to get through. We shouldn't have to worry a thing about me going over time. I think I'm still haven't missed a suburb yet. Um, set five, three of the games actually changed the two. rhythm a bit, so I have to be on my toes. One, two, because they're gonna be quite different from the first version of the game. Go, games. go, go! What two? Go, go, go! Hey, Jeff, Jeff. Go, go, go! What two? And Jeff, 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 Jeff. What two? And Jeff, 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 Jeff. Go, go, go! And Jeff, 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 Jeff. What two? And Jeff, 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 Jeff. Go, go, go! One, two. What two? Go, go, go! What two? And one, two. What two? Go, go, go! What two? Go, go, go! And one, two. One, two. What two? And one, two. One, two. Go, go, go! And one, two. One, two. What two? And one, two. One, two. Go, go, go! Jeff, Jeff. Jeff, Jeff, what two? And Jeff, 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 go, go, go! And one, two! Alright, yeah, so that one, as you could probably tell, changed the rhythm a little bit of repeated jabs. From two. I don't know how to put it into words because I'm not real. Um, but, yeah, it changed the rhythm a bit. Micro Row 2 actually introduces a new cue. When I hear a whistling sound, I'll have to tap A twice in quick succession. It also has the same alarm sound from the first Micro Row, so I don't like it.
So I remember the term that I was thinking of when talking about figure fire too, and it was the offbeat. Um, after learning how to switch from on to offbeat on from figure fighter to figure fighter two, and adding a new Q from micro to micro row two, packing pests two is not only going to do both of those by giving us an off an offbeat kind of bass rhythm as well as a new Q. This is also the last game that is under a minute long. Um, that's one of, I think, three songs in the game, the other two being Board Meeting and the Remix 2, where the official soundtrack version of that song comes in at under a minute long. Uh, meanwhile, these last two minigames, Karate Man 2 and Remix 10, are both pretty long. So, if you thought this was going to be over soon, we still have like five minutes at least of gameplay to go. do so hot there. But I'm not going to worry about my performance on Karate Man 2 because coming up last is Remix 10. It's the last minigame. This is the 50th one. Okay, there's my first miss. Unfortunate, but not surprising based on how my performance was there. I don't really have much time, so I'm just going to... We're just going to take the L there and go into Remix 10. This is a medley of not only all 28 previous minigames that have shown up with an original song, however, it also includes a snippet of the tutorial theme and the credits theme, making it a medley of 30 different songs.
about you. All 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 about you. We're done. We did it all. We're done. We win. And I got the superb on Remix 10. That's what I really wanted. Uh, so yeah. Um, that's all the superbs. Almost. That's Rhythm Heaven Fever. That's basically the best I'm gonna be able to show it off. Um, to end off the showcase, I guess we can mention what the me medals do. Um, so the perfects I mentioned earlier give you these prizes. You can read something where you get like a little like special Easter egg reading about some characters or a certain event that happens within a mini game. Um, like for example, these are the two air rally players. Um, you can also listen. You sometimes just get the songs. So like here, you have to unlock some of these songs. Um, and then the medals that you get from Superbs, you can unlock and play stuff like Endless Games. Um, such as this one is Mr. Upbeat. I put my headphones back in my laptop so I can't hear the game anymore, so I can't play this one well. Uh, but there's a lot of extra stuff in this game. It also features, you can use your medals to unlock extra games, which these four are all mini games from the GBA. Uh, Rhythm Heaven, which, as I mentioned earlier, has not seen a release outside of Japan yet. Um, but with that being said, that's all I have. Um, and my time slot is basically over. Um, so thanks! I uh, had a lot of fun. And I think coming up next is a tour of the world of Axiom Verge, which is a really cool game with a really cool world. So I recommend checking that out.